Power levels. People have been debating them since their first mention in Dragon Ball Z. Raditz assigned a numerical value to Goku and Piccolo's strength, and suddenly, we had a point reference in all of our nerd arguments about who would kick whose ass in a fight. Even after power levels stopped being relevant, at least in numerical terms. Power levels! Super Saiyans! And you! Post Frieza, people still argued about them. We are obsessed with the ability to rank someone's strength in objective terms. It allows us to make inferences on what might happen should two characters meet in battle. And when I'm referring to people here, I'm really not talking about anybody else more than myself. However, being the absolute ridiculous nerd that I am, I couldn't stop. I still thought about how I could quantify the physical ability of a human being into purely numerical terms. I eventually dropped the concept of martial skill being included in the calculation at all, because combat ability is a thing that multiplies one's physical ability in combat or overcomes high physical ability with lesser physical ability. About a year ago, I spent two solid weeks researching specifically to create a power level calculation that would line up on some level with at least the beginning of Dragon Ball Z. This is purely based on physical ability and the average untrained human being's power level typically runs about five. You have a power level of only five. Just like the farmer with the shotgun. The calculation consists of five weightlifting benchmarks, four bodyweight movement benchmarks, a test of jumping ability, speed, agility, and endurance. Vegeta! What does the scouter say about his power level? To calculate your power level, first add up all of your one rep max lifts from the list, your bench, squat, deadlift, overhead press, and your max weighted pull up, including your body weight. Form here is key. The bar must touch your chest in the bench press. The squat must be at least tops of thighs parallel. You must lock out your hips at the top of the deadlift. The bar must start below your chin on the overhead press and end locked out over your head. And you must perform a strict, no kip, no swing pull up. Your arms must be fully extended at the bottom of the pull up and your chin must get over the bar. Next, take your maximum number of reps in two minutes for the push-up, sit-up, air squat, and pull-up or chin-up. You must rest in the top of the push-up. You may not put your knees down or your butt up in the air to rest. Sit-ups must begin with your shoulders on the ground and end with your back being perpendicular to the ground. Squats must be below parallel. Pull-ups and chin-ups must be strict, starting from full extension of the arms, and your chin must go over the bar, and if you come off the bar at any time before two minutes, you are done. Multiply the number of pull-ups by three. Add these numbers to your total. If you can do any of the calisthenics at 120 reps or more in two minutes, you've got special rules. Add a weighted vest with one quarter of your body weight in it and retest at another time. Count each of these new weighted reps as two points instead of one. If you can get to 120 reps again with a quarter of your body weight, make it half your body weight and do three points per rep. If you can do it again, make it three quarters of your weight and do four points per rep. And if you can do it again, make it your body weight and do five points per rep. I doubt these are physically possible, but the rules are here just in case. Next, take your vertical leap. You see that you must start from standing and leap as high as you can. This is not about how high you can get your knees, 
It's about how far you can reach up with your jump. Record in inches and add the result to your total. If you get above 50 inches for your vertical leap, it's two points per inch. Now for speed. Take your 100 meter sprint time and subtract that number from 15 seconds. If you ran it in 15 seconds or more, you get a zero for that time. Take that number and multiply it by 100 and add that number to your total. Middle distance speed is measured with the mile. Subtract your time from 600 seconds, which is 10 minutes. If you run it in 600 seconds or more, record your score as zero. If you can run a mile in under five minutes, you'll get three points for every second from five minutes down to four minutes, which would mean that if you can run it in five minutes, 30 seconds, you would get 90 points instead of the 30 you would normally get. If you can run it in four minutes flat, you would get 180 points instead of 60. Add the result to your total score so far. Long distance running is 10 miles. Subtract your time in seconds from 600 seconds, which is 100 minutes or an hour and 40 minutes. If you run it in 6,000 seconds or more, record your score as zero. Divide the resulting score by 10 and add it to the total so far. Your anaerobic endurance is measured by 80 seconds minus your 300 yard shuttle run time in seconds. If you run it in 80 seconds or slower, record zero for this time. Multiply this number by 10 and add it to the total. Your agility is measured by 10 seconds minus your 10 meter agility shuttle time in seconds. If you run it slower than 10 seconds, record a zero for this time. Multiply this number by 10. Ultra long distance score is simple. For every mile you can run past 10 miles without stopping, add 10 points to your score. At the end, to get your power level, take your final total score and divide it by 100. This calculation is an expression of someone's maximum strength, speed, agility, cardiorespiratory and muscular endurance, and anaerobic capacity. In pure, raw terms, this calculation is a representation of a person's general athletic ability. Two people with the same power level might have different attributes, contributing to the same numerical value. And don't think I don't appreciate the effort. By a wide margin, you're packing more of a wallop than Daddy ever did. However, you will never, ever defeat me with that form. You can't hit me. But in general, it is a good representation of how well this person would do in a general athletic setting and not necessarily in a single activity or sport. Or Power levels are bullshit! Now that you can calculate your power level, how do you stack up? Leave your answer in the comments below. And please remember to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like it. Until next time, good luck and train hard.